What a beautiful mission trip. Let's hear it for them. And this month, South Haven is giving a special Easter offering to the Annie Armstrong, which helps support missions. So this is our opportunity to go above and beyond a little bit extra. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. There we go. If you're a first time visitor, welcome. We're so glad that you chose to be with us this morning. And if you'd look in your bulletin, there's a connect card. If you could fill out basic information on that and take that to the meet the pastor table out in the lobby at the end of the service, he'll give you a free gift. It's a pretty good exchange. Also, if you want to think about baptism, there's a special April 24th coming up, which is a Baptism Sunday. If you have questions about that or you're interested in that, if you would mark that on the Connect card and somebody will get with you and talk to you about that. But that's not the only Sunday you can be baptized. You can be baptized anytime you want. So don't think you're limited to that one time. If you've been coming for a while and you're interested in joining the church, the South Haven Discover class is for you. That's a class that will be occurring in May that's taught by Pastor Richard. It'll tell you about the church, beliefs of the church, and how you can join. You're not obligated to join at the end of that, but you're welcome to. And last but not least, this Friday night, we're going to be celebrating Good Friday. There's a service here at 630 in the evening. We're going to be praising the Lord with song, with scripture, and taking the Lord's Supper. And I would really highly recommend you be here. It's going to be a beautiful service. So with all that being said, today we have an opportunity to lay everything down at our Savior's feet and praise him this morning. I think sometimes we forget how detailed and how loving our God is, but go outside, look at the flowers, look at the trees, look at the color, look at the detail, look at the love that was put into what God has given us to experience. So right now, let's choose to worship him, to worship him in spirit and in truth. And let's invite the Holy Spirit to come before us and let's choose to lay everything down at his side and praise him this morning. Would you join me in prayer? Father God, we are so thankful. We're so thankful that you love us so much that you've done everything that you've done, that you've created such a beautiful planet for us to enjoy. And forgive us when we forget the details, when we forget how much love and compassion and, and just all the care that you've put into things. And Father, right now, I pray that each person here will experience the Holy Spirit, that you will be praised, that you will be glorified, and that we will honor you with everything that's done here this morning, for we choose to worship you. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Cindy, so much. for What a beautiful way to start our service and that great reminder uh, of why we are here. A common purpose, common goal is to worship the King, the one true God. Let's stand together. Let's do it. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Let's worship. So don't lose heart, oh my soul, oh my soul. Don't give up, there is hope. There is always hope. Lift it up. And there is peace in the storm, in the storm. No, don't forget, He is Lord. He is Lord of all. There is a King of glory. There is a God who saves, one who is strong and mighty. Freedom is in his name, so open the gates of heaven. Lift up a shout of praise. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. So lift your eyes, stand in awe, stand in awe. There is a 
king there is a king of glory there is a god who saves one who is strong and mighty freedom is in his name so open the gates of heaven lift up a shout of praise there is a lion roaring jesus the king of glory Sing this out, nations bow, nations bow, mountain shake at the sound of just one name over all Jesus reigns. I know, I know. Sing it again. Nations bow, mountain shake at the sound of just one name. Over all, Jesus reigns. I know. So they took branches of palm trees went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Let's welcome this morning. He is the King of glory. There is a King of glory. There is a God who saves, one who is strong and mighty. Freedom is in his name, so open the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. Amen. Sing this with all your voice this morning. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. find strength to face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away washed away Your presence, all our fears are 
wash away, wash away, Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. To face the day in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all.
is Jesus on his side. Hold forever those he loves. He does. Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Hey! 
death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to Father, I believe we could all admit that we are somewhat undone. There is definitely always something missing, something that's incomplete, something that we long for, something that we are moving toward. We have not arrived. We get glimpses of heaven on earth when we have worship experiences like today. We get a sense of your presence. But Father, also comes those times that we even say with the prophet Isaiah, I am ruined. I am ruined. Because the glaring presence of sin becomes magnified in the very presence of God. So, Father, may we not proceed any more in our day. May we not proceed any further in this time together without having just done a little business with you where we come before you, Father, recognizing the name of Jesus, the name of which we, we have called for salvation, the name that is above all names, the name, Father, upon which we must be saved. And may we just check our spirits and hearts.
the piano lightly plays, would you just take a moment and just bring yourself before the Lord and ask Him to cleanse you of your sinfulness and to prepare your heart for His voice. Would you do that now? Father, would you forgive us of our independence that we try to do too much without you? Would you forgive us of our neglect that we have desensitized our lives, Father, so much so that we don't even recognize when you're around us? Would you, rec would you forgive us of our worry, of our anger, of our lack of faith, and for allowing things and people to steal our joy? Father, would you just help us to see the way you see and would you guide us, Father, and extend the compassion and love and grace. Father, we are grateful for the second chance too, Father, and the third and the fourth and the 700th and the millionth. Thank you, Father, for the continued grace that comes our way. Father, we desire a teacher this morning. We ask that you speak into our hearts this wonderful truth. And as you speak, Father, may we be a responsive people, not with haughtiness, not with pride. But Father, may we be receptive in mind and heart of the word that you have to say. And Father, may we emerge and walk away, Father, with a new challenge, a new perspective, and better. Father, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. We pray these things to our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Great. Welcome back. It's good to see you again. Hope you've had a really good week and what a great way to culminate our week and also to move us into Monday. Appreciate that compilation there of our Costa Rica mission team and the trip. What a wonderful thing when nine people come to know Christ and how God has just moved and that's an incredible thing. Wow, we got other opportunities coming up where we are on mission for God. You know, we, we uh, embrace an Acts 1-8 mindset here at South Haven that to be God's witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so uh, we do that. Part of that uh, comes up here, you know, part of our Jerusalem comes up here in June is our Vacation Bible School. And so uh, I hope you're aware of that. Maybe you got kiddos or grandkids that you want to be a part of that or some neighbors or whomever that may be. Uh, there's a sign up right outside the, uh, the worship center here. So check that out. And also we're always needing a volunteer. And so if you want to yeah, use your skills and just be a just a wonderful volunteer I, you just do that just show up and just invest in some kids lives I promise you this you're going to make an eternal difference in someone's life when you do that so anyway consider volunteering this week and uh, uh, for that first week in June for our vacation Bible school and uh, you know what this reminded we have another mission team going out to Des Moines Iowa coming up later in the summer so a lot of activity again x 18 mindset and just be rem I want you to be reminded of this is that this is the activity of your church uh, we take uh, the Great Commission seriously and uh, by doing so you know these things are possible through your uh, wonderful stewardship and your financial gifts as well so these thank you for that thank you for your giving that allows us to continue to do ministry the offering boxes at the exit are a great way to get your offering to us or southhavenchurch.org slash give is how Amy and I give many of you give as well and I invite you to investigate that way that's very seamless and uh, allows you to stay consistently connected to your church as well so good stuff well we are coming to the end of our series of messages on angels and uh, what has been a 
you know, just really been enlightening, enlightening for me, hopefully for you, uh, just to find out about these, these ministering spirits that God dispatches on our behalf. And uh, that's kind of what we've done. These are these uh, God's unseen messengers. And so we're going to investigate another truth of angels this morning. <clears throat> And it's going to take us through several passages of Scripture. And so we're actually, we're going to look at how angels, and we're talking about angels and us, and how they interact and react to God's people. And so it's uh, uh, quite interesting, and maybe you'll find something quite enlightening here this morning in realizing uh, the very presence of angels that are always ministering and being dispatched on God's behalf to minister to you and me. And so um, anyway, this is... Uh, where God is guiding us and leading us this morning. You know, right now, we, we're not wanting for anything of sports. We've got a, if you're a Jayhawk fan, we know we just got a little uh, national championship going there on our neighbor uh, to the west. And there we go. I knew Paul. I just, that was all for you, Paul, and there. And, um, but you know what? We got an NFL draft coming up. We've got baseball season going on. There's all kinds of things happening right now. So, you know, uh, you kind of pick, uh, pick your sport. I, I gravitate towards particular sports, you know, and so I, I like some better than others. But I, I, I'm not wanting of, doing, of being a fan throughout the year. You know, you just do that. So I'll always watch a football game. I, you know, not even. If it's, if it's my team or not. I'm always kind of following football. I, uh, I have a, you know, kind of after that, I'll usually watch some basketball, and I'm kind of seeing the, uh, you know, college basketball or NBA. Um, I sometimes watch baseball. Uh, that's it. And then periodically I'll watch soccer. I, I have let go to a sporting game or something like that periodically. Uh, I watch hockey during the Olympic Games or maybe the Stanley Cup. So you see that comes around every now and then just to kind of see what's going on there. And, uh, and, and I'll just kind of go ahead and take the boos and hisses now. If I want to take a good nap, I'll go ahead and watch golf. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just telling you, oh, yeah, you know, just all good. Anyway, so there's a few in the house, but anyway... But uh, there's something I do follow every now and then. It comes around once a year. It's the only time I follow it, and that is horse racing. <laughs> you think that's a sport. That's a sport, isn't it? I think it takes quite a bit. But uh, I follow horse racing only when there is Kentucky Derby, Preakness Stakes, Belmont Stakes, and stuff like that, because I'm always just interested, will there be a Triple Crown winner? And so I watch that first horse race, and I really do think it's a beautiful thing to see those horses run and, and all that. But I, I just, and then I'll find that who won the, who won the Kentucky Derby, and then we'll fo follow that horse to see, okay, are they going to do the Belmont? Will they win the Preakness? Will there be a triple crown winner this year? But uh, that's the extent of horse racing. But here's what I know. So I don't know much. I've watched some horse racing movies, which is really good, like Secretariat and things like that. But here's what I found is there is a piece of equipment that they usually, or not usually, but some jockeys put on their horses in order to help their horse stay focused in the race. And you might be familiar with these. They're called blinders or called blinkers. And you can see that that's what that is, that white uh, garb on the horse's head there. And if you'll notice, they're, they're on the sides. It's got these, like, these little circle cups right here. And so it, distract, it keeps the peripheral vision from being any, or limits the peripheral vision of the horse. And so at most, basically, just straight ahead. That's all you're focused on. Don't be distracted to the left or to the right, but just look straight ahead. And it allows the horse, it keeps the horse to run without any distractions. You know, when we find that's a really good analogy, actually, that's a biblical principle for all of us. It actually comes out of Hebrews chapter 12 to where we're always supposed to keep our eyes on Jesus. You know, run the race uh, with endurance, keeping your eyes on Jesus, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. You might be familiar with that passage. But here's what I find. Do I find this also speaks to angels? And it's this. Angels have a purpose. They have a job. These created beings that have been around since the beginning of time have a job, and they know their job. And their job is you and me. It's a singular focus. They are dispatched at God's command to minister to God's people. Angels have that primary duty. Hebrews 1.14 reveals that to us. Angels, as are these ministering spirits, sent out to serve those who are going to inherit salvation. That is, that kind of there, if you want an angel, an angelic job description, or what, you know, what do you guys do? Well, I am a ministering spirit sent out to uh, minister or serve those 
who are going to inherit salvation to the believer. So angels created by God here for a purpose and it's that singular focused purpose. It's about you and me. So this last message, what about angels? God's unseen messengers. Let's consider what the Bible teaches about angels and us and about their reaction and interaction with us because actually there's something that's always kind of going on around us that we may not be aware of. So I want to look at three of those areas and I think you'll find maybe hopefully something quite encouraging and uh, quite helpful here today. So let's consider three of those ways that angels are reacting and interacting around God's people. And the first thing, this might be the most familiar passage that you are aware of regarding angels, and it's this one, that strangers may be angels in disguise. So maybe you've heard of that, you know, like, you know, be careful, you're entertaining angels. You don't know that. There's, it's an individual or someone that uh, is, you know, what, what's all this about, you know? And so Hebrews 13, 2 says, don't neglect to show hospitality for by doing, for by doing this, some have welcomed angels as guests without knowing it. And so be a hospitable person and take care of people. Uh, it's kind of a, maybe a thank you gesture for the, for the angel. But uh, here, we talked recently, last few weeks, about that word hospitality. Again, let's repeat that. It's a unique word that's made up of two Greek words that's kind of fascinating. And the first word is phileo, which you might know is one of the words for love. It means brotherly love. The second word made up of hospitality is the word xenos, X-E-N-O-S, Xenos means stranger. So hospitality means showing brotherly love to a stranger. What a beautiful thing. We should always be doing that, whether we're thinking about it entertaining an angel or not. We should be doing that. Furthermore, Jesus said this. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 25? He says, I was hungry. You gave me something to eat. I was thirsty. You gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. And then he says, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done for me. So it reminds us, once again, showing kindness and hospitality, encouragement and love to others is doing something unto the Lord itself. So all of a sudden, we come to a point of saying, wow, the way I interact and treat people should really remind me that I am maybe even you know, experiencing something spiritual here. That's a spiritual dynamic that God is calling us to understand and include in our lives. So I want you to think about sometimes, maybe this last week or last few weeks, that you have talked to somebody, that you've had a conversation with somebody, that you did something kind for somebody, or maybe you were rude to somebody. <laughs> you know, think about it. It's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have been that way. Think about that. I, I think about uh, when, uh, a few weeks ago when Amy and I were going out to Atlanta to visit my son and his wife, and uh, we, were, we were driving, and we, we picked the best times to drive. Right when the gas prices hit the highest, we took a road trip. And so here we are in somewhere in Tennessee, and we're gassing up at over $4 a gallon. And a guy comes up to me, and he is, says, I, I have no resources, and I'm trying to get to Florida. Will you buy me some gas? So what do you tell a guy? when gas is over $4 a gallon and I've just filled up my tank for 60 bucks and he wants me to do something with him. I said, okay. I don't know. I just filled up the man and gave him some gas. I don't know if that was an angel or not. I just feel like God is telling us to be kind to people and strangers as they come around. Yesterday I was doing a little hospital visit and as I was coming out of the hospital there was a man struggling to pull his motorized, could, could not get his motorized scooter out of the back of his car. That was, that's quite an ordeal. It was an electronic thing. He couldn't get it out. So there for about 10 minutes, I help a man get his, try to get him into the hospital. I come up here to the church for a few minutes yesterday and all of a sudden there's a FedEx truck in the middle of our parking lot. I don't know why FedEx thinks we're open on Saturday, but FedEx was here. And they had a package for us. I take the package. I get to talk to the guy about Jesus. All of a sudden he looks at me and I'm, I hear his radio. You know what? He's playing Christian music. <laughs> he said, you caught me listening to Christian music. You know, he's in a church parking lot. I, I think he was just like, and then all of a sudden we got to have a conversation about the Lord, about church, and all that kind of stuff. And I don't know anything about, I'm not saying any of those people are angels or anything. I'm just saying that I think God has called us to make sure that we engage people in conversation and, have, and even talk to strangers and see where God leads that. I'm not sure about uh, a man that I was able to help with gas in Tennessee and about a man in a parking lot of the hospital or a FedEx driver. I don't know what God's going to do in any of their lives, but I do know this, that I was available and I was 
just trying to be a ministering individual and somehow some capacity in their lives. And I think God has called us to be that kind of person everywhere because we're doing it unto the Lord. We're doing it, and we just need to determine, wow, God, you've put these people in my life, and maybe somehow, some way, God will use a little bit of kindness down the road to that individual. You never know who finds Jesus because you were kind. You never know. That's what we find. Strangers. Strangers, all of a sudden, may be angels in disguise. But there's something else we find about angels this morning. Something else that's quite unique, and maybe you didn't know this was in the Bible. I, I find this just really cool. This is really fascinating. Do you know that there is angels celebrate and rejoice when an individual comes to know Jesus? Angels celebrate in heaven at our salvation. Oh, a beautiful thing. Jesus tells us this happens, and he talked about it through one of his parables in Luke chapter 15, and it's the parable of the lost coin. So listen to how he describes this beginning in verse 8. What woman has ten silver coins? If she loses one and does not light, she, she, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep, does she not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me because I have found the silver coin I lost. I tell you, in the same way, there is joy, some may say rejoicing, in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who repents. What a beautiful thing. Party in heaven regarding those who come to know Christ. Heaven rejoices at one lost person coming to know Jesus. Did you pick up on those two little words? It were to over one, one individual. There's a party for one. Sometimes we say, like, wow, can we, let's wait. So there's a, a lot of people got saved today. Let's just put them all together and we'll have a party for everybody. No, it tells you there's a party for one. There's a party for you. There's a party for me. Everybody gets a party. You know, it's a rejoicing in heaven based upon their coming to know Christ. God takes the time to celebrate and invites all of heaven to celebrate with him regarding the individual. Why does there so, what's this a big deal? Because all of a sudden, an individual who was on a path of hell and destruction has turned turned around and embraced the grace, the love, and the joy, and the beauty, and the salvation of Jesus Christ. They had an eternal destination going one way that was forever in a, in God, in a hellacious place. They have turned, and they've embraced the Savior, Jesus Christ. There's a party going on then. It speaks volumes. You know what? This speaks volumes of the value of every individual in God's sight. God values the pe people so much and the individual who comes to know Christ so much that there's celebration over repentance. There's celebration over coming to know Christ. So what does this tell us? I think it should tell us a couple of things. I think first that we should rejoice nonetheless. We should have parties all the time and be just we celebrate the victories of people coming to know Christ. We should make sure we're doing that. Why do we do that? We just make sure we're doing it. But here's the second thing it tells us. We ought to be confident in knowing that at some point in my life, there was a party for me. I need to be confident in that. You should be confident in that. You should not walk away here today thinking, I sure hope there was a party for me someday. I hope there was or I hope there will be. You can walk away from here today saying, no doubt there was a party and a celebration because I said, yes, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Do you have that confidence today? Can you say that there was no doubt at some point? You don't have to know the day. You just have to know that there was an experience, that there was a time when you turned from your sin and turned towards Jesus. Has that happened in your life? You see, now listen, I want to help you with that because I want you to be sure because actually what I would like to see happen today, and we won't know about this until we all get to heaven, but wouldn't it be awesome today if they say, you know what, on April 10th of 2022, there were about 10 parties that went on at South Haven Baptist Church in heaven because people gave their life to Jesus. Wouldn't that be the coolest thing? Now listen, you should never commit your life. You should not commit your life to Christ because you want a party. You commit your life to Christ because you're lost without Jesus and you need salvation in Christ because you're a sinner and your destination is hell until you repent and turn towards Jesus and change your eternal destination. That's what it is. And out of that, do you know what the consequence 
Oh, yeah, an eternal home in heaven where God says, I go and prepare a place for you, and yeah, immediately there's a party. Beautiful. I don't want to make any assumptions this morning. I'm looking around here. I know some of you. I know your stories and everything. Some of you don't. So I don't know what some of you are struggling with this morning. It may be this very thing. But I want to show you. I want to give you a glimpse of something that might help you this morning. I want you to imagine here with me. Look, there's going to be, here, there's three circles come up on the screen. And this is kind of the way life has happened, okay? This is a snapshot of, of the Bible and of life. God created everything perfectly. God's design from the beginning, he was the creator, created everything perfectly. Man and woman was perfect. There was no sin in the world. Everything was just right. God even says, it says in the Bible, Genesis 131, that God saw everything that he had created and it was good. Very good indeed. And then something happened because it became not so good. Because Adam and Eve, the first man and first woman, decided to disobey God. He told them directly, do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And they disobeyed him and sin came into the world. Now when sin came into the world, it came into the world for everyone. And so now everyone is born with sin. And so that's what we find. So we all come with, we've got sin. The Bible says that all have sinned, Romans 3.23, and fall short of God's glory. We are all in that same boat. And so really where we end up going is this second circle. And because there is sin, there's all of a sudden, there's brokenness in our world. We were singing about that just a minute ago. We affirmed that. Is he worthy? Is this world broken? It is. And it is why? Because of sin in this world. That's the reason we have war and disease and murder and strife and deceit and lying. It all comes back to Genesis chapter 3. Two people who disobeyed God and brought sin into the world. And all of a sudden, brokenness in the world. And we find ourselves in a broken world and actually honestly we're a broken people in a broken world and that's what that looks like but here even though we're brokenness here the brokenness comes on Jesus I mean, actually, the Bible says that because of our sin because of our brokenness there is a penalty for that there's punishment for that there's consequences for one's sinfulness and the consequences the Bible tells us is death and so in Romans 6, 23, though all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but he says that the wages or the penalty of sin, the price for our sin is death. But in the same verse, the same thought process, the Bible tells us in Romans 6, 23, but there is a free gift of God, eternal life in Jesus Christ. So it tells us, here's the penalty, here's your answer. Right there in the same verse. Here's the problem, here's the solution. Right there, it's Jesus Christ. So all of a sudden, we get to leave our brokenness and we embrace, that's where we go. And that's what we get is the gospel, which is good news. And so out of brokenness, what there is. How can we say it? There's good news that comes from brokenness. And the good news is Jesus Christ. And so when we all of a sudden realize, wow, I have moved from brokenness into the gospel of Jesus Christ, all of a sudden I realize that that is the love of God that has come to me. And all of a sudden what that good news means is that God has loved you so much that while you were a sinner, Jesus died for you. While you were still in the broken circle, Jesus said, I'm going to die for you. Romans 5, 8. He proved his love. So, wow, he doesn't wait for you to get cleaned up. He says, come to me just like you are. I'll clean you up. And so we get to the good news. And all of a sudden, we realize, well, how do I get from brokenness to good news? Well, Romans 10, 13 says, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone. Not just someone. Not just Baptists, not just you, not just everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord. So you all of a sudden, what are you doing? You're repenting and you're believing. You're going one direction, you're turning and saying, I'm going to go another direction. And all of a sudden, it changes the whole trajectory of your life because you've embraced the good news. And then all of a sudden, we get to go back to God's design. And all of a sudden, God calls us back into this relationship that has been severed. And we all of a sudden, God has restored us. And the Bible says, all to all who have received him he gives them the right to become children of God that's the whole that's you know what that is life that's the whole story of life it started out well it got some got messed up and Jesus said at the end I'm taking care of it and it's through Jesus Christ so here it comes back to us this morning what circle do you find yourself this morning none of us are in God's design because we're not there. We haven't lied to that. It's not where we started, but you're either in a brokenness circle or you're going to be in that gospel circle.
that good news circle. Which one of those have you landed in? And which one are you in right now? If you're in the brokenness circle, you're saying, hey, I'm still there. And you want to hear and you want to know about the good news of Jesus Christ and be restored so that we're back on track with God's purpose and God's design. I want to help you get there. Today, let's start a party in heaven for you right now. I'm going to ask you to bow with me in prayer. If you are in sensing right now, you are in need of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to forgive you of your sin because you're in that brokenness and you're looking for answers to get out. Pray with me. You're just praying to the Lord. You're not praying to me or anyone else around you. Just simply say this, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I live in brokenness. I now turn to you, the gospel, the good news, and I ask you to forgive me of my sin come into my life be my Lord Savior leader and guide in Jesus name Amen if you prayed with with me this morning we just want to help you there's a party going on in heaven for you right now but we'd love to celebrate with you this morning would you just do us a favor take out your connect card On the back side there, it just says, got several boxes or six boxes at the top one. It says, start a relationship with Jesus. Would you check that? On the front side, would you just give us your name and some contact information? Would you just bring this to me out of the the meet and greet area at the end of the service or drop this in one of our offering boxes? Or you could even bring it to one of our encouragers that's going to be here at the end of the service here in just a few moments. Just bring it to them, and they'll want to encourage you. We want to celebrate with you, and we want to help you understand what it means because you've gone from brokenness to good news, and God is beginning to move you back into a right relationship with him. If you're online with us this morning and you're saying, well, what about me? I just prayed with you. For our online guests, I just want to say thank you for being there and thank you for tuning in today. Would you just reach out to us and say, I don't want someone to contact me regarding what you said at info at southhavenchurch.org. That's as simple as this. Info at southhavenchurch.org or there's a phone number that's coming up on the on screens as well and you can make that phone call to the church. We'll follow up with you and connect with you as well. God is always moving us from brokenness to good news. I hope you've discovered that in your life as well. What a beautiful thing. Can you see? This is incredible how angels interact and react to what's going on here in our world right now. I want to give you one more. I want to give you one more thing to consider today. You might find this unique. I hope you find it encouraging, and I definitely will find it in God's Word. At death, angels escort us to heaven. You ever thought about that? At death, angels escort us to heaven. We find death to be such a mystery. Death to be such a mystery. You know, the word actually means separation. It's actually separation of spirit and body. But you don't realize that death, that's the reason at death, we, we are more like angels than anything. We don't become angels, but we are more like angels because we have lost the part that angels never possessed, and that is the physical bodies. And our physical bodies separated from our spirit, and we are more like angels. This is the reason we find that uh, death for us uh, seems like the end, but it's not the end for those who know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's the reason as we know Christ as our Lord and Savior. This is the very reason the Apostle Paul was saying death has been swallowed up in victory. Do you remember that? This is coming up. Wow, what a good time. Easter's coming. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where death is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? There is no death. Why? Because we get life, everlasting life, because we've committed our life to Jesus Christ. You know, today we grieve over the death of loved ones, and we do that, and that's natural, and we should. But if they had a relationship with Jesus Christ, you know what we do? We grieve with a hope, realizing this world is not their home and they have embraced something far better, better by far. It's a beautiful thing. So uh, right after my dad died, about 13 years ago, I'm, I'm, in a, um, I'm in a grocery store, southeast Oklahoma, where my parents were living. The cashier recognized me as Sam Young's son. She knew my dad had cancer. She knew that he was struggling. She asked me, how's your dad doing? 
I said, well, he passed away yesterday. And she said, I'm so sorry to hear that. I thought he was getting better. And I said, oh, he did. <laughs> My dad was a believer. I said, he did get better. I said, he's in heaven right now. You know, I love that word better. You know, do you not want something better than what you're living right now? Do we? We got it. Listen, that's not the next best, biggest thing that's come, coming around. That's not what makes it better. God describes something better for us. Actually, I love how the Apostle Paul says it in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. He says, I have this desire, verse 23, to be with Christ and depart and be with Christ, which is far better. He just goes and tells us, hey, my existence here is good, but I've got something better waiting on me. Have you ever considered that, the better thing? Can you imagine a, a situation where there's no more sin? You know, that just makes it better right there. Let's just say, yep, I'm all, and count me in. I want to be in a place where there's no more sin. That's heaven. That's the better thing. There's no more sin. Oh, I love it. No more sin, no more temptations. Knowledge is unlimited. No more limitations on your body. <laughs> you know, my goodness. You know what? For, for the last 46 years, you know what I've done? Every morning of my life, I do this. Why? Because that's where my glasses are, okay? So I have worn corrective lenses for 46 years, and in heaven, I have perfect eyesight. I, I, well, I won't have any corrective lenses, no arthritis, no surgery, no hearing aids, and no cancer, no confusion, no pulled muscles, no aching backs. That sounds pretty good to me. I was speaking on heaven several years ago and I said something to the effect that there won't be any dentists in heaven because we won't need to have our teeth fixed and that kind of thing. There was a dentist in the congregation. He came up to me and he says, thanks, you just kicked me out of heaven. It's like, oh man. You know, yeah, dentists will be there. Dentists don't get to practice dentistry. How about that? And there's going to be some doctors there but they don't have to practice medicine. Now, what does this have to do with angels? Jesus tells us a wonderful story in the book of Luke chapter 16. You've got two men who died in about an angelic presence. These two men are as different as they could be. So you have one man that was rich, lived in luxury, finest food, best clothes. You have another man that was a beggar. He was poor, had sores all over his body. He longed for the food that fell from the rich man's table. So the Bible tells us that one day the poor man died. Then the Bible tells us, listen to what the Bible says, and he was carried away by the angels to Abraham's side. What does that mean? That means he was carried into the very presence of God. Luke chapter 16, verse 22 and 23, this is how it reads. One day a poor man died, was carried away by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And looking in torment in Hades, this is the rich man, he looked up and saw Abraham a long way off with Lazarus at his side. This is that picture of a head. We get a glimpse of, of eternity from this passage in Luke 16. Lazarus, not just escorted. Escorted, I will escort you here. Grab my arm, we're going together. No, that's an escort. No, he's like literally picked up and he's carried into the very presence of God. I don't know what that does for you. It kind of gives me a little goosebumps and it reminds me that at death, regardless of who's around you or regardless of who's not around you, there is a presence around the believer that ushers you, carries you into the very presence of God. <laughs> Carried. I can't imagine. Billy Graham says in his book, Angels, death for the Christian cuts the cord that holds us captive in this present world so that angels may transport believers to their heavenly inheritance. I don't know. I just... Think it's beautiful that God has thought so much about you and me and the believer that he throws a party when you say yes to Jesus and he says welcome home by getting carried by his heavenly messengers at death. He's got our lives bookend. It's a beautiful thing. My mom passed away in 2011. My sister was there and she tells me an experience that she was visiting my mom on the day before she died. And she comes to the hospital. She walks up to the, my mom's room. And she walks in. Now, you understand, my mom was not on medication. She was just her health. A lot of issues, a lot of things. She was on no medication. She was very lucid. My sister gets to walk into the door. And she stops abruptly at the door. 
My mom had had no physical strength at all up until this point. She had no physical strength, and she could only she's only bedridden. Somehow the nurses had picked her up and got her out of the bed and were sitting here in her chair. But my mom was not just kind of sitting back in a chair all slumped over. My mom was erect, and she was engaged, and she was looking forward, and she was on her looking here. And my sister watched, and my mom's having a conversation. And there's no one else in the room that my sister could see. And the conversation lingered. And she said it was, she was, my mom was engaged in what was being said, nodding her head, saying things, talking, not knowing what's going on. My sister just watches this whole thing. And she's engaged. My, my mom had no physical core strength and couldn't even hold herself up. But here she is sitting up in a chair by herself. She was after a few minutes. You know, my mom kind of leans back. Conversation's over. My sister walks in. My sister's kind of be kind of sly about what she saw and making sure she's like, Mom, you know, I just want to know. She goes, uh, Mom, was someone here with you? You're talking to somebody? My mom kind of smiles and she says, Maybe. <laughs> you know, it's as if, you know, when my mom said that, you know what I'm thinking? Mom knows something I don't know and she's just kind of being sly about it. Maybe. You know, my sister tells there's some other things going on there, but here's what I find. I'm going to tell you, I believe my mom was having a conversation with the heavenly hosts. They were getting her ready and say, hey, Charlotte, it's coming soon, and we're ready to carry you to the presence of the Lord. My mom was a good believer, helped me to find Jesus. She was instrumental in that, along with my grandmother. My mom died 24 hours later, and I just have no doubt she was carried into the presence of the Lord. Now listen, let's go back. Broken circles do not get you carried into the presence of the Lord. Gospel circles, good news circles, get you carried into the presence of the Lord. So each one of us has to deal with our mortality and each one has to deal, what's going to happen to me when this life is over? I want you to know, you do not want to stay in a broken circle. You need to go ahead and move yourself and say, I'm going to make the choice today to move to the good news circle. We want to help you find that today. This whole thing, everything we've been talking about this morning, it just reminds us, you know what it reminds us from, from the time where we entertain strangers and from the time that where there's celebration in heaven because we have Jesus to our being carried home. It just kind of packaged together reminds us, you know what, we're not home yet. There's something more. There's something better, like Paul said, better by far. And what, if there's something better, you know what it reminds me like, do we have a longing? Do you have a longing for something better? There's a heavenly home that God has created for us and it's waiting for you and me. It kind of makes you, it's like I'm homesick for something like that. You know what homesick is like? I remember being in college, being homesick and being away. You, you long for familiar faces and smells and sounds and stuff. We know what that's like. You know what, just I want to, there, I will long for something more. I, it reminds me of the story of Charles McKinney. Charles longed to get home. He was in New York City. He lived at, his home was in Dallas, Texas. He wanted to go home so bad. He wanted to go home so bad he couldn't, he couldn't afford to fly home. And he had a buddy that worked at the, one of the airports in New York City. And he calls up his buddy. And actually, uh, the guy was not a, like a ticket agent, but worked like in a cargo area for cargo planes. And his buddy said, hey, Charles, I can get you home. <laughs> Charles shows up to the airport. Get, buddy sneaks him into the back way. Charles has a laptop in one hand. He has a cell phone in the other and a small bag of clothes. And he says, yeah, man, how, how can you get me to Dallas? And he says, well, I want you to stand in this crate to see if you fit. Three and a half by three feet. Charles grabs his stuff. He gets in the crate and he says, yep, I fit. And he goes, good. And he puts the lid on it and seals it and puts him on the airplane. Charles McKinney arrives in Dallas, Texas. Somehow some, the authorities found out that they were, you know, transporting Charles in an illegal, illegal way. Charles gets arrested, and then at the end of the day, Charles is interviewed on local television and say, Charles, why did you do it? Why did you do that? And here's what he said. He says, my goal was just to go home. You know how you want to go home sometimes. It's so bad. It hurts. He goes, I just wanted to go home. Maybe we have a longing for something like that. I believe that is what God is instilling within us. God has a better home created for us. So when you say your last goodbye, when you breathe your last breath, when you speak your last word, 
God says, your home is waiting for you, and I'm going to get you there, and I'm going to carry you to my very presence. Death has no hold on the believer. We live in his presence, accompanied by the saints and angels for all of eternity. So now, what circle are you in? How do you get out of your circle? The circle you choose makes all the difference. Pray with me. Thank you, Father, that you have given us the answer. Father, we're always looking for an answer. So, Father, we recognize there's a problem and you give us an answer. And, Father, then we sometimes there's just so many people that don't like the answer. They don't want the answer. They don't want Jesus. They want another answer. They want there to be multiple answers. They want there to be so many different answers. Everybody has their own answer to the same problem. No. There's one answer to one problem. Jesus Christ. So, Father, may we find ourselves, each one of us, as we walk away from here, embracing and knowing the good news circle. Thank you, Father, for being our answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We want to help you this morning. Encouragers are going to be right here waiting on you. They're here to pray with you and to encourage you, to walk with you. Listen. How can we help you? You ready to get out of your broken circle? Have you already done that? Let us know. We want to celebrate with you. I'm going to be out at the meet and greet area. I'd love to meet our guests, and I have a gift for you, and just to say thank you for being here, but anyone comes by, come by and let's talk, and maybe we'll set some a conversation later in the week if you need to talk. We'd love to do that as well. For those of you online, remember, info at southhavenchurch.org, and our phone number gets you back to us and so that we can connect with you somehow in some way this week going forward as well. Whatever God has laid on your heart, however we can help you, we're here for you today. I want you to be reminded of this, though. Maybe you are now understanding, and this, it took the three circles to say, I know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I know the time that I move from brokenness to good news, and I'm good. But I want to ask you, I'm going to take it a step further. Are you obedient? You may be good with Jesus, but are you obedient? So what do you mean? Have you ever taken the next step of your salvation, which is getting your baptism on the right side, where you go public and let a world know that you are a follower of Jesus Christ? The Bible commands us to do that. Baptism Sunday is coming up. Let us know if you want to be a part of our April 24th Baptism Sunday, and we will connect with you as well. Why don't you stand with me as we get ready to dismiss it's hard to say goodbye to these angels. I hope it had piqued your interest to go and discover more wonderful truths about angels. Looking forward to Easter Sunday. Looking forward to our Good Friday service. I hope you're coming back. Bring someone with you. Bring someone with you so they can hear the good news yourself. Thank you, God, now as we walk away from here today. Father, may we understand that the individuals we meet, we may be entertaining angels. The individuals we meet, Father, it may be Jesus, Father, because we do that to the least of these. So, Father, may we be reminded to be kind and compassionate and caring and loving and reminded that your presence is always around us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday.